Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different chromatography techniques which people are using to purify the uh, fact, uh, protein or the other factors from the cells where they are over expressing these components. Now, how to perform this affinity chromatography in your laboratory? Let us take, uh, so for this I would like to take you to my laboratory and where we are going to show you each and every step how to do the charging, uh, how to do equilibrate the columns and then how to uh, purify the protein using the nickel NDA affinity chromatography. For uh, protein purification, uh, first we have to inoculate the culture uh, into this uh, larger volume of ERP class then uh, we will induce it. So, first I will show you how to inoculate. This is the single colony grown overnight culture. So, we can use for the uh, inoculating into large cultures. So, this process should be done in aseptic condition. So, that means we have to use laminar air flow for this purpose. So, and also we have to remember uh, we, we should include uh, suitable uh, resistant marker like uh, ampicillin or uh, canamycin this kind of antibiotics or this is uh, depends upon what vector what resistant vector you have you are having so in this case we are using ampicillin uh, as a antibiotic so let's start uh, we have lysed the cells using sonication now we have to centrifuge the lysate to get supernatant. So that supernatant we load on to nickel ATA column and purify the protein. So I will transfer into 50 ml centrifuge tube, then I will centrifuge. Uh, while the centrifugation is going on, we have to wash the column using first this is in 20% uh, uh, ethanol so we have to wash first with water then uh, equilibration buffer so uh, let it drain completely the 20% ethanol then we will add water uh, double distilled water so at least 5 column volumes of water should be added to remove complete uh, completely and uh, next we will equilibrate with the lysis buffer the buffer which we used for the lysis of the bacterial cells before equilibration of the column uh, we have to uh, charge the column nickel NTA there are two types of bits are there one is already readily charged bits which comes from company and another one is we have to charge they will give only uh, NTA agar those beads so here what we will do is we will charge the beads with the nickel and then we will equilibrate we already washed the column uh, with water and uh, point to normal NaOH again with water so now we will equilibrate So this is a nickel hexachloride solution. Uh, 
so we will keep in the, this condition at least 20 minutes to charge the beads after that we will uh, remove uh, nickel NTA we will elute the nickel and uh, nickel solution and then uh, equilibrate with the lysis bar So after 20 minutes we eluted the uh, nickel solution, uh, next we will equilibrate with the lysis buffer. We have to wash at least two column volumes to remove any free nickel which exists in the beads. So after equilibration, next step we will load the uh, lysate and then incubate for binding. This is a far off thing. Uh, I am going to close this and the pan. So once column packing is over, we kept it in ice and uh, we will keep in this condition for at least 2 hours for binding. So that uh, is tagged uh, protein, we will bind to the nickel NTA and uh, in further steps we will allow the protein. After incubation with weights, uh, we have to follow another 3 steps to get completely purification done. First step is we have to wash with the equilibration buffer. First, after uh, the beads taken out from uh, ice, you have to you have to remove the outlet so that all the flow through other than beads will be taken out. And the next step is we have to wash with the equilibration buffer. And the th third step is we have to uh, elude the sample, uh, elude the protein, uh, histone protein using imidazole containing buffer. All for all these buffers, the pH should be adjusted prior hand. Not like uh, you have to first uh, you take uh, the buffer, like, uh, lysis buffer, and you have to add uh, imidazole. It's not like that. It may uh, increase the pH of the buffer. So after compiling all the uh, lysis buffer with the imidazole then we have to adjust the pH so that throughout the procedure the pH won't change so this is a flow through whatever we are getting is flow through uh, in next step we will wash with the uh, in, uh, lysis buffer in this step we are going to wash with the uh, lysis buffer or equilibration buffer so I just this is the lysis buffer uh, before doing this we have to observe the beads we should not directly load onto beads you just have to uh, pour through corner uh, through the wall of the uh, column otherwise it may disturb the uh, the beads so protein may also degrade so this we have to uh, keep in mind while doing this uh, washing while doing purification we have to remember that every time you are introducing new buffer you are introducing new buffer that time you have to collect the fraction and uh, this can be used for the uh, running SD cells and uh, testing the purity of the samples and also the flow through part and the washing part what we have collected we have to keep it uh, safely after 
verification of the gel only we have to throw say you are getting only 10% of the protein in your uh, purified fractions and 90% of the protein irritating in the flow through that time you can reuse the uh, flow through for purification uh, purification and purifying the protein and so you have to collect the fractions in a small micro centrifuge tubes and we have to save those fractions daily and save so we washed with the equilibration buffer and we also collected the flow through now it's time we will wash with the 20 millimole of imidazole so this will remove any mass specific proteins binding to uh, the beads so we will wash with the 20 millimole imidazole containing buffer then we will eluting subsequently eluting uh, 250 millimolar imidazole containing buffer Final step, we are going to help with the 250 millimole imidazole containing buffer. So, what we are going to do is we have to incubate uh, beads with this buffer for some time and uh, collect the fractions.
after removing the complete fractions we have to wash the column with water then 0.2 normal sodium hydroxide solution then uh, again water after final wash with the water then we have to store the beads in 20% ethanol so I will wash it and store it in the while the washing is going, going on, we have to take 50 microliter of each fractions and uh, run it on uh, SDS phase. That will give the purity of the fractions. We have to heat the samples before loading onto SDS phase. And also, we have to keep this, all these fractions what we have collected at 4 degrees Celsius for further confirmation of the purity. Once the purity is confirmed, we have to dialyze those fractions against the, our buffer of interest, then use for the further studies. So we purified uh, the protein using nickel FDA column. Uh, we run the gel and uh, stained or de-stained. So now it's time to document the gel. So uh, we have to identify whether we got any uh, single band fraction or not. So this is the gel. I kept on uh, white ray. Now just close it. So we have loaded a marker and uh, this uh, from this side, second one is the load, 
this is flow through wash one wash two and uh, these fractions are eluted fractions one two three four five serially so as we can see uh, the eluted fraction showing a band corresponding to uh, this protein uh, but the molecular weight can be uh, calculated using the software image lab software so as we can see uh, in uh, the protein corresponding to this purification uh, his tagged one it is going most of the fraction in the uh, flow through so we can use uh, as i said in the video earlier we can use this flow through fraction again for purification of the protein you can incubate uh, this flow through with the same beads um, and you can uh, repurify again so that will increase the uh, uh, productivity getting the protein so these are all other bands whatever we are seeing in the protein uh, this uh, eluted bands those are because of the contaminants or uh, degraded protein contaminants sometimes may come because of uh, histidine to uh, three or four histidine having in folded state that will give uh, possibility to bind to nickel yda column and also washing a vigorous washing should be done if you don't wash properly with a high amount of imidazole that will uh, give you this kind of non specific binding so with this uh, uh, we'll conclude the video so i hope it will help you to uh, yeah, help you in your work for uh, during protein purification or uh, help you to understand uh, how protein purification works let's move on to the application part of the nickel uh, to the affinity chromatography so affinity chromatography is a very very robust technique or robust chromatography techniques which can be used for uh, multiple applications one of the application is that you can use the affinity chromatography to isolate the protein complexes if you remember in our uh, earlier uh, lectures we have discussed that suppose you uh, stimulate a mammalian cell with the insulin what will happen is that insulin is go and bind to the insulin receptor and in this process the insulin receptor is going to get phosphorylated once the insulin receptor is getting phosphorylated it it brings the uh, binding site for many of the adapter proteins once these adapter protein goes and binds to the insulin receptor they actually relay this phosphorylation signal and that's how they actually give this signal to the nucleus and that's how the gene expression profiling is going to be changed and that actually is going to change the overall physiology of this particular protein so suppose you are working in your laboratory and you would like you are exploring the this problem or the similar problem where you are stimulating a cell and you are looking for that what are the proteins are binding to this receptor or what are the proteins are coming together to make a multimeric complexes like some of the uh, signalosomes which are being formed when you are uh, going through when a b cell or t cell is under the active immune responses like against the cancer cells or against the infectious organism and if you are exploring any such problems then you could be able to use the affinity chromatography to isolate these bigger complexes or multimeric complexes and you could be able to identify each and every protein and you could be able to answer many of the biological questions what you are supposed to do is so affinity chromatography is can be used to study or isolate interacting partner of a particular protein which means in this particular problem you are going to have one protein which is going to have the affinity for the matrix in this case suppose we are this protein is insulin receptor because we are stimulating with the insulin so our protein number 1 is the insulin receptor now insulin receptor you are going to put some kind of affinity tag for example i have 
put the histidine tag or I have put the GST tag so that it should have the exclusive affinity for the beads. Now what we have in this approach the matrix is incubated with the protein number 1 which means the insulin receptor and then you wash to ensure the tight binding which means you ensure that the beads are having the insulin receptor present on its surface. So, you what you have done you have taken a column which has the affinity for the protein number 1 in this case this is the insulin receptor. So, what will happen is the protein will go and bind to the beads which are present in the column then you wash to ensure that there is no non-specific protein present. So, now your protein number 1 is bound. Now, you take the protein number 2 or you can take the cell lysate whichever you would like to. If you are would like to study the interaction between protein 1 and 2 then you can add the pure protein 2 and you could ask this question or if you would like to flow the pure lysate you can flow the pure lysate. So, what will happen is if you flow the pure lysate the lysate protein will interact with the beads. So, the protein 2 has the option of interacting with the matrix or interacting with the matrix bound protein 1 means it is interacting with the protein number 1 which is bound to the matrix or it has an option that it interacts with the matrix directly. If this is the case this protein is not going to give you the answer. So, if the protein 2 does not have any affinity for the matrix suppose you change the condition in such a way that the protein 2 does not have direct uh, affinity to the matrix, but it will bind only if it is having the affinity for protein number 1 then in that case the protein 2 will be bound to the column only in a one condition that the protein 2 has an affinity for protein 1 which is bound to the matrix. Now, you wash so that the non-specific protein which are binding directly to the matrix are going to be removed and then you do the elution of this with the salt. So, what will happen is the both the factors the protein A, a protein 1, protein 2 are going to be eluted and then you are going to test this protein 1 and protein 2 onto the SDS page and the pattern of the elution is going to tell you that both the proteins are uh, interacting or not or whether if suppose you are using the cell lysate then, then the multiple proteins are going to come out. In that case you have to do the control experiments where you are going to incubate the lysate to the beads uh, without uh, containing the protein 1 and that actually is going to con work as a negative control so that you will know that okay, these are the 10 factors which are binding to the matrix directly. Now, the eluted protein is analyzed in the SDS page or the SDS page followed by the western blotting to detect protein 1 or protein 2. As a control the cell lysate or the protein 2 is also added to the matrix without protein 1 to rule out the possibility of protein 2 binding directly to the matrix. So, the control is very much important that you should be able to know that these are the uh, uh, lysate protein which are directly binding to the uh, beads not to the protein 1. In a uh, alternate experiment you can use the uh, uh, affinity chromatography to generate or to design a protease assay. So, in a typical protease assay what you are going to do is you are going to have a peptide then you put a affinity tag onto this peptide and then you use the affinity beads. So, what will happen is this is, this is going to be your sample. So, you can change the peptide you can have the complete peptide library you put it into the 24 well dish. So, in this 24 well dish is going to have the different different peptide sequences which are bound to the beads in separate wells. Now, what you are going to do is you treat them with the protease and what will happen the protease is going to cut the peptide at this point ok which means it is going to rem, uh, keep the tag bind to the beads and the remaining peptide portion is going to be eluted. This peptide you can collect into the supernatant from all the beads all the wells and then you can 
uh, uh, perform the multi analysis which means you can collect these peptides and do a uh, uh, mass analysis and depending on this mass profile you could be able to deduce the sequences or deduce the places where the proteases is cutting in each well and depending on this analysis you will be able to determine the protease cutting site of that particular protease. The fourth is uh, you can actually be able to do the immunopurification which means you could be able to purify the, the cells of your interest. Okay. This is important in terms of the places where you could be able to uh, uh, suppose you would like to purify the bone marrow cells or suppose you want to purify the stem cells and so on. So, in those cases what you do is you, you use the some affinity uh, molecules which will going to have the exclusive affinity for that particular uh, uh, immune cells. So, the evident biotin system is used to capture and isolate cytokines from the immune cells. Biotinylation of antibodies allow immobilization of antibodies in the correct orientation on the streptomycin coated glass beads. Lymphocyte lysate is passed to the column packed with the glass beads containing antibodies bind cytokines. The cytokines are then eluted by the flowing buffer of decreasing pH or by chiotropic ions and the antibodies remain bound to the column due to strong affinity between evitin and biotin which is resistant to this chemical treatment. So, in this uh, what you in say, uh, apart from isolating the cells you can also study the cytokine profiling from these cells. So, every cytokine is going to have the its uh, antibody. So, you can use that antibody coupled to the avidin and biotin system. So, avidin is having a very strong affinity for the biotin and what will happen is that you can take the uh, this lymphocyte lysate and pass through to the column which actually contains this particular kind of antibody. Then you wash and elute with the ligand. So, what will happen is when you do the elution only those cytokines will come which are been having the affinity for the uh, antibodies which are present into these beads and that is how you could be able to identify the cytokines which are being eluted or which are being secreted from these lymphocytes. So, this is all about the different chromatography techniques which you can use to uh, purify the factors from the cells over expressing the your uh, protein or other metabolites. Now, let us recap and summarize and also should understand how you can exploit these different chromatography techniques to perform the protein purification or perform the purification of your factors. So, what we have discussed? We have discussed about the ion exchange chromatography which is going to exploit the charge which is present on to the protein. Then we have talked about hydrophobic interaction chromatography which is going to be exploit the hydrophobic patches which are present on the protein. Then we have discussed about the affinity chromatography which is going to work on the exclusive affinity between the receptor and ligand. And then we have discussed about the gel filtration chromatography which is going to work on the surface area of a particular protein and surface area is directly proportional to the molecular weight of that particular protein as long as the, we are considering that all these proteins are of globular in nature. Now, let us see how you are going to plan out the protein purification or how you are going to plan out the purification of these uh, uh, factor from the cells which are over expressing. So, what you have is you have started with the cells. The first is you are going to broken these cells or you are going to destroy the cellular integrity that actually is going to give you the cell lysate. Uh, now, depending on the type of uh, purification strategies you are going to use. So, suppose the, pro the factor what I am over expressing uh, is containing a tag then in that case uh, I will use the directly we, I will use the affinity chromatography. Uh, 
but imagine that I do not have any such thing and I would like to use the conventional chromatography. In that case what I will do is first I will do is what I will do is I will do a ammonium sulphate precipitation. So, what I will do is I will use the uh, different concentration of ammonium sulphate which means from 0 to 100 percent and if you do have not recount you can actually go through with the um, Google or some other sources and that will actually will tell you that what amount of ammonium sulphate you have to add into a cell lysate to get the 30 percent saturation. So, the 100 percent saturation is the maximum what you are going to get. So, and that is actually theoretically you may not get the 100 percent saturation in many of the cases. But what you can do is the first step you can do is the you can do a ammonium sulphate precipitation and that actually is going to give you the different fractions. All these different fractions can be collected and can be tested for the presence of your protein either it would be by western blotting or it would be by the enzymatic assays or sometime it may be simply by looking at the uh, uh, SDS page and looking at the molecular weight of your protein as well because we are talking about the pro cells which are be over expressing your protein. Now, you got the different fractions of the ammonium sulphate. Now, suppose you got uh, 60 percent is the fraction where your protein is present. Now, uh, I have the 60 percent ammonium sulphate fraction. What I will do is directly I will start running the HIC column. Okay. If you remember we have discussed this in the past also that why the HIC is a preferred column before the ion exchange chromatography because now you already have the ammonium sulphate into this solution. What you can do is you can directly add some more salt which is required to have the uh, uh, the exposure of the hydrophobic patches present on these proteins and then you can directly run the HIC. Once you are done with the HIC you are going to get uh, different fractions. Okay. Now, imagine that I got a fraction where the 30 percent uh, uh, harmonium sulphate is giving me the fraction which contains my factors. Then what I will do is I will take this factor and I will do a dialysis step and that actually is going to reduce the level of the salt present in this particular fraction and then after that I will do a ion exchange chromatography followed by I will do the gel filtration and that actually is going to give me the purified protein. So, if I will be keep using the combination of hydrophobic interaction chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, gel filtration chromatography and within the ion exchange chromatography I have the option of using the anion exchange chromatography or cation exchange chromatography and using all these combinations probably you will be able to get the purified protein. If you follow this particular type of scheme the definitely there will be more losses of your protein from the cell which means the recovery as well as the yield is going to be low compared to that if you have the affinity tag then you can directly use the affinity chromatography and that is it in the single step you may get the more than 90 percent purified protein. Once you are done with this then you can just simply run the gel filtration chromatography and that actually will give you almost 100 percent pure protein because the gel filtration chromatography may remove some of the, uh, the aggregated material from your protein and that is going to give you the uh, close to 100 percent purified protein. So, with this we would like to conclude our lecture here and in our subsequent lecture now we have produced the protein in the subsequent lecture we are going to study how you can validate or how you can actually be able to characterize this isolated factor and how you can be able to show that the factor what you are producing into these host cells is of good quality so that you could be able to use them under the downstream biotechnology applications. So, with this we would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.